Um, so this is the drone. This is obviously not where I left it off last time. I kind of went back. I talked about before. I didn't like how chunky the arms were. And so I tried scaling them down and that just didn't work um, as nice as I wanted to. So I literally just grabbed all the edges going along there that I added, dissolved them so they went away, and then I re-added uh, or modified it and then re-added those. So you can see there's no more divisions right here. Uh, but if I go to my edges now and click on the cube, I could re-add those divisions inside there. That's why it's so important that you get the stuff right before you move on to the next stage, because otherwise you're going to have to backtrack um, to undo all of that stuff. Uh, some things I, I look at when I'm modeling is just the flow of the individual um, edges. So this one kind of going down and arcing back, that's going to dictate if I was to put in a bevel there, how that bevel is going to be shaped. So if I didn't want this uh, ribbon or rib, whatever, to be like on an angle, I just wanted it to be straight, I want to make sure that that is straight right here. Now the way that these get crooked is it takes the uh, curves that are here, takes the curves that are there, and it finds this like in between, and that's how it creates these loops that are not perfectly straight. Um, so sometimes you just have to go in there after you've added some, and then just start to modify those. And this is where it gets tricky because getting this to move the direction we want um, is not always an easy task. There are tools inside here like the slide tool. So if I click on that and then I click and drag here, I can basically slide it right along that edge to help me kind of smooth out those, um, that rib. And the same thing with the point. If I click on that point, I can slide that point and get that. You are so close. Let's turn around this way. There, that feels better. Okay, so this one is going to create a nice uh, straight rib. After I fix that point, there we go. And then this one will have, you know, an angled rib if I didn't want that. If I need to delete stuff, I can just grab all the edge, right click, and then say dissolve. Okay, if you hit delete, it'll do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you want to dissolve it so it just deletes the edge. And there we go. Okay. So uh, I can tweak that some more. So the base of my body is done. Okay, I'm not going to go and refine that anymore. I like the shape of it. I like when this is uh, all smoothed out and I click off of this and I turn my divisions off like that. I like how it has this like little suction cup thing on the side of that. I thought that was a cool way to uh, attach that thing there. Um, I like how these are pointed outward. These feel stable. As you model stuff, you have to think about the smoothness of some areas. So we want things to be very smooth in one spot, but then we want to be able to also go very crisp. If everything is smooth or everything is crisp, we lose that, that realism to it. So you'll see here on the side of my drone, this is very smooth, but then it goes into this crisp shape. This is very smooth, but then it hits this crisp spot. This is smooth, then there's crisp. This is smooth, and then it's crisp. Okay. So you have to have a mix of those so that it feels more realistic. You could spend all day modeling something, put the best textures on it, put the best lighting in it, and if you don't have a solid model that shows off the, the model the way it should be, it won't look realistic, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to focus on building um, the motor, the propeller area. This is um, uh, uh, my way of doing it. Obviously, there's 15 different ways. You'll have to just take what I give you and apply it to yours how uh, you see fit. So this is what I had kind of set up for the sizing. Um, I could actually still use this as my starter piece. So uh, I'm going to use this. Now I still want this to be cloned into all those spots. I could drop this into this symmetry node and it would do that. Uh, but what would happen is when it smooths out, it's going to smooth out all those things. And depending on how much um, divisions I have on those individual motors, that could cause my whole system to just come to a grinding halt. So I typically like to have a separate uh, symmetry node for these pieces. So instead of doing all this work, I'm just going to copy this whole thing and delete the cube at the bottom and then just drop my cylinder into there. So now I have this one, which is my motors, and this one, which is the drone itself, uh, just to not confuse myself. I will rename. And when I say motors, it's the whole thing. It's the little part here that would be the motor that would spin around. 
that's going to have a little peg that would stick up. The uh, propeller was, is a cap that goes on the top of it. If you've looked at pictures of those drones or you have a drone, all sorts of different shapes, sizes, flavors, colors, whatever. Um, the DJI Phantom, I believe, has a uh, motor. It has a little stick that sticks up and then that has a, a, a permanently attached item. And then your propellers will snap onto that. That way, when you put the drone away, you can pop off the propellers and store them in the case without having all the propellers always out, okay? It helps to know those things because as you model it, you wanna build it like you would see it. So I'm gonna start off with the cylinder and I'm just gonna build the motor housing. And just so you can see what motor housing looks like, uh, like this, okay? But much simpler, this is like a full blown like engine motor uh, we basically need something that's cylindrical and something that would have this peg on it. That's the motor I'm looking for. Um, depending on what you are looking for, the kind of design, sometimes you'll actually be able to see into the motor housing to see some of the wiring. And that could be a cool little detail that you would add to your drone. Um, so I'm going to keep this, you know, simple, but still have some, some complexity to it. Definitely not as much as that one was. Um, all this stuff is arbitrary. How far this comes up, obviously, like, that would be stupid. Why would they have that? Um, typically, something like this is good. We're not going to see the bottom, so this could really go down a bit further if we needed. Um, I'm going to change my divisions here, so I think 12 might be good. Uh, let me turn my subdivision off there. There we go. All right, so that might be good there. I'm looking at these divisions. And in my mind, I'm trying to, to wrap my brain around if I did want to create some openings inside here for, let's say, some wiring to be seen, where would I want those divisions to be, okay? If I did this as six, I have basically like six different spots I could do, but those are huge. If I did this as 12, well, now I have these little chambers. I could do like a little opening right there so I can see some wiring, an opening here so I can see some wiring. Um, if I did 24, well, now these are too tiny. Maybe I can't see that detail, okay? So even though I'm not physically gonna say that for every piece, every piece I create, I'm thinking about what is the end goal of that piece? How am I gonna uh, add detail to it? If I screw up, delete it, drop a new piece in, and then we just move on. Um, so that's good. I like the divisions. Um, I'm gonna hit uh, C on this. And if we remember from our product, whoops, there we go, something like that, right? We have to fix that. So we grab all the points, we right click, and we optimize. So now if we were to click and move it, no problem. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bevel here. I'm gonna round this off. You look at the motor housing, typically there's some sort of rounding that would happen in this area. So I'll round that off some. Um, this is not my final rounding, this is just to get things going. Uh, I'm going to add another edge loop about here, and I'm sectioning off for these faces. That's what I'm after. That's where I'm going to be able to see into the motor housing um, to see all the little wires and stuff. If I grab those and just hit delete, well, now I can see right into it. And then if I grab all the faces, uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, one more step first. I'm going to add my little bevel here just to tighten that up. That should be good. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to grab all my faces. And then I'm just going to do an extrude on the whole thing. Let me make sure it grabbed everything. It did grab everything. Uh, I'm going to turn on tolerant when I mark key this just to make sure I do grab everything. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to extrude this. There we go. Now it's not filling in this area. If we look at it, you'll see that we have um, a little lip right here. If I hit create cap, it will cap it off. So it'll extrude and give it thickness at the same time, okay? Um, I can see some of the other surface poking through. I'll fix that, all right? So now this has some dimension to it. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper, I think, or go this way. Let's go that way. There we go. If I go too thin, it's going to feel paper thin. If I go too thick, um, it'll feel too chunky. That seems like it's about a good amount. Um, I'm going to turn this off for a second. 
And I'm just going to adjust some of these points in here just so that is a little bit more uh, blocky looking. And just is probably going to be grabbing these edges and just doing a bevel on that. I don't know why I went in the menu that time, but I did. There we go. And then I'm going to grab this edge, and then I'm going to go to my scale tool, and I'm just going to scale that out. Okay. On the inside, we're not going to see it. I just want to get it out of the way, basically. And then I'm going to grab these, and then just move that. Oh, come on. Now, some things are just precautionary. We're never going to be that close to this that I need to see inside it, but I'd rather fix it now than have to worry about that later. I don't know why I'm clicking these buttons so much there. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, good. Uh, we can still see it poking through a little bit, but again, we're not going to be like right on top of this and we'll have other things inside there. Um, so let me see what this looks like smoothed out. Okay, so those holes are a no go. So just like our product, we have to add some hold lines to this. So I'm going to go to, um, I could bevel this, but I think just adding some edge loops around here, around there, here, and here, and then also on the inside, that may be sufficient. Nope. I still need to add some going the other way. All right. So uh, now I'm going to grab the pieces here. I'll try it in one window. Usually I'll... Um, do it in one window first, see how it looks, and then I can transfer it to other ones. Because I think the divisions there are going to give me kind of a weird puckering, most likely. Yep. You can see, whoa. There we go. Um, so you can see how if I deselect my stuff, I have this weird like line work going around that, so I need to fix that. So the bevel is a no-go. I can't use the bevel there. All right, so that's undone. That's back there. Good. Okay. Um, so it looks like I might be able to just add some divisions here and here, and that might be good enough just to hold it in place. Let me turn that smoothing on. Yeah, that'll be fine. So a little bit of rounding there is good. Uh, or is fine, I'm, that's acceptable. Just dropping these in. That one's already there. No, it isn't. There it is. And should these be exactly in the same spot? Yes, but it's not going to kill us if they aren't. Again, nobody's going to be looking at it that close um, that they would be able to tell if there was a slight difference from one to the other. Especially, we're going to be zoomed out of this. Our, we're going to be pretty far away from the drone, so we're not going to be like right on top of it. So it should work. If we go there, I think that's pretty acceptable. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, now they do kind of flare out. Um, that's again, it's not a huge thing. I don't mind that, how it's doing that. Um, I may just take that off there, go back to my faces. And I'm going to go to um, loop selection. And I'm just going to extrude this out. And then move that down. And all that's doing is just giving it a little bit of uh, more shape so that it feels like if there is a change in surface there, that it's intentional is all it's doing. So that'll work. So from back here, that looks like it's, you know, a housing for a motor. Uh, then I'm going to need a, another cylinder. So I'm just going to make a new one. I'm going to jump to my top view. Now, this is where we have to start building everything very specific. Uh, turn those off. Okay, that's the right one. Uh, I'm moving this into the right quadrant, so it's lined up with that one. But eventually what's going to happen is uh, we're going to have a propeller and everything needs to spin around the same direction. If one piece is here and another piece is there, they will wobble and it will not look like a uh, uh, propeller. So 
This is my new cylinder right here, even though we can't see the divisions in it. Let me just throw some more divisions on the cap so we can see it. Nope. Uh, whatever. It's right there. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my snap. So I'm going to go to snap. And I'm going to go to vertex snap. <clears throat> and then if I move it this way, you'll see how it snaps to the vertex right there. Move it that way, same thing. So now that new piece is exactly centered right on that motor housing. When I do my propeller, same thing. That's going to be centered right in the middle of that motor housing. So now I can turn snap off, move it up, shrink it down. And you saw how tiny that uh, or thin that uh, peg is. So I'm just going to make that you know somewhat thinner and shorter. It doesn't have to actually physically be able to work. It just has to look like it could work. So that is good enough. Okay. I don't need a cap on top or a fillet or anything because I'm not going to see it. Uh, I could even, if I grab this, just turn the caps off because we're not going to see them. All right. So that's that. Uh, I am going to duplicate this. And this will be my motor peg. And this will be my propeller cap. So on top of the drone um, propellers, typically there is drone, uh, a little cap that would fit on top of it. So like this here would screw down onto that peg. And then there will be a cap that will cover up the top of the peg so it doesn't look, you know, cheap like that. So you basically have carte blanche to uh, adjust that. Um, I'm going to go with one segment there. I'm going to go with 12 segments here. Uh, I think I can hit C on that. And then you'll see a repetitive pattern here. So I am optimizing all those points. So then I can grab the divisions. Then I can do a bevel. Then I can go to oops, all the points here, scoot that up some, and there's the cap. Okay, now once that gets all smoothed out, let me drop these things into the symmetry, drop these things into that. Now you'll see it looks just like a little cap. I do have a little bit of a, um, you can see it up there, yep. Uh, a little bit of a fong issue. So I'm going to click on the fong, turn the edge brakes off, and that should fix that. I think I still probably want to take that off and do a little bevel on the bottom of that too. I think it'll just add a little bit more realism just to have that nice and crisp there, smooth here. Yep, that's better. Okay. Uh, so now I need some sort of propeller. So I'm going to go with a cube for this. And I'm going to build it here, and then I will port it over to the other side. <clears throat> okay. Um, back to this, back to this. So looking at what a, a propeller looks like, it's basically just a cube type shape that's twisted. That's all it really is. Um, it also has some tapering to it. So it does, you know, taper down at one end, typically the end of it. Um, you can see here, this one is smaller. It flares out and then tapers back down. Uh, common thread and all of these. And then they're twisted. So that way when they spin, it lifts up off the ground. Okay. So um, again, multiple ways you can do this. I will show two ways and you can decide which one you want to do. So uh, this one here, I'll do it um, the first way. So I'm just going to hit C. I'm going to go to my edges or my faces and just rotate. There we go. So that one's rotated. Then I can go in here to my um, edge loops and just add a couple edge loops and then go back to faces and then just start scaling some stuff down. So I'll scale that down. I'll go to the other side, Oops. scale that down, and there we go. Okay, so that works. And then I would just need to add in, um, whoops, move tool, yes, edges. Uh, I'm just going to add some bevels to these pieces here. Do, do, do. And basically, all the ones I'm going to add are all the way around it, except for these middle ones that I just added. bevel. Okay. And that propeller is basically done. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Just block modeling 
adjusting the divisions, rotating stuff. Um, the other way to do this is I add the divisions now. So I want to see them as I add them. So that should be good. And then under here, these are all different deformers, and we kind of talked about these um, throughout our past assignments. So one of them is um, taper, another one is twist, and I believe there's also a flare somewhere inside here. Mm, squash and stretch, I guess we could use that. Oh, bulge, that's what I'm thinking of, okay. So uh, I'll do bulge first. So I drop this into this cube. That's the one, yes, okay. Uh, I'm gonna click on the bulge, say fit to parent. That automatically resizes it, and then I can do the strength of this, and it'll adjust it. Now you'll see it's going in the wrong direction. It's like bulging left and right. So I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. I think it was 80 degrees. There we go. Uh, then I will say fit to parent again. What? All right, I will do this myself then, forget you. Uh, I will stretch you out. There it goes, and I will shrink this in. Well, I have to do it here. Hmm, let me add more divisions. Oh, maybe I just rotated wrong, like totally wrong direction. Bulge again, click this, rotate. Well, why aren't you working, Bulge? All right, Bulge doesn't want to work. We will delete Bulge, we will do something different. Uh, we'll do Twist first. So go to Twist, drop that into Cube, Fit to Parent, and then Angle. Okay, so that one is definitely going the wrong direction. Okay, let's try that again. Fit to parent. There we go, nice twist. Okay, now this one you can see I can already start off with a bunch of divisions and then twist this as much as I want to. Now, I like to show these different things because for different items you might have a reason to do something like that. So for a propeller, that is plenty of twist. Uh, it's probably a little bit too much twist. There we go. Um, but let's say that you were doing an animation for a Twizzler um, commercial. If you twisted it enough, you would get like a Twizzler, and that's an easy way to model a Twizzler. Or you can just model Twizzlers for fun. That's fine, too. There we go. All right, so let's try the other one again. Let's try this. I'm not going to use Bulge because it didn't want to work. Mm, bulge should work. Let's try that again. I'm going to be reluctant here. So let's get this going. Let's rotate this 90 degrees this way. Let's move that up. Let's say fit to parent. Okay, let's go and bulge again. Now it works. So I have to do it twice, apparently. Um, cool. So now what's neat about this is I can move this bulge up and down. Okay, so I can control where that whole thing is happening um, inside here. So you can really do a lot with this. Um, you can also adjust the curvature and play with different shapes. Um, I've never clicked fill it before. Hopefully this doesn't break. Ooh, that's fancier. Um, I like that. I could even make this bigger so I can scale this up bigger than the shape, and that way I have a little bit more room to play with. Okay, so this one on top, we knew exactly the shape we wanted. Bigger, bigger, smaller, smaller, twist a little bit. This one we're still kind of playing with it. We want to see what the look is going to be. We want to see what the shapes are going to be. Um, and we can really create some different shapes very quickly this way. Um, especially if we think of, we're doing a whole line of drones, a whole line of propellers. I need to model these and these and these and this. With this setup, I could pretty much model any one of those very quickly. With this one, I have to go through and redo all the stuff that I just did, okay? So just stuff to think about as you're building your things. Um, either one is acceptable. Uh, we don't want to have 36 divisions on this, so I think uh, not even that. 10 might be good. There we go. Um, and you can still tweak this after you're done. Um, I think I still want to maybe take the bulge down and scale this a smidgy. Oops. Keep going the wrong spot. Go to here. That's not the right way. This is the right way.
And that's fine. I'm going to scale this anyway. Okay. So I'm just going to um, go up to object and say current object, or there it is, current state object. Nope, that's not it. There it is. So now I have one of those that I could then go ahead and tweak the shape of that some more to create what I want my end propeller to look like. Um, give them a little bit more thickness than you think. Uh, when we do our animations and we have this thing spinning around and we have motion blur on it, it's very hard to see if they're paper thin and like super narrow. So give them a little bit more thickness than you would uh, typically think you would need. Uh, now I'm going to go through and just do my bevels again. And no one told me I forgot this one. Thanks a lot. I'm on my own up here. There we go. Cool. So again, doesn't matter which one you would use. I'm going to stick to the fancier one. Um, I will delete the other two. And then I'm going to call this propeller. All right, so um, how many of these do I need? You'll see this one has two. There's one on this side, one on that side. This one has three. Sometimes you'll see ones with four. It all depends on what your setup is. Uh, even this one you can see has more of a setup than I'm going to give it. You may want to do that for the look of fanciness. Um, so to create two, uh, I'm going to do this, or to create multiple ones, I'm going to go to MoGraph and use Cloner. So you have to think back to the last time we used Cloner and then apply that information. Um, object, no position, and rotating it like so. And, oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted radial, that's what I wanted. And that, there we go. And then we can take the radius up. And then I can go to my transform here and rotate this, I think 45, nope. 90, there we go. Okay, so now I have the ability again, uh, how many of these do I want? Right, so I can go with three, three is typically a good number, four is kind of boring. Um, I would go with five or three. Um, you could do two also, but again, thinking about when we do the animation for this and we have this thing spinning, the more items we have in there, the easier it's gonna be to see that motion blur. Sometimes you'll, put the items in there, they'll motion blur them and they look like they're invisible because the surfaces are just moving so fast and there's not a lot of information. Uh, but even with this setup, you can go to something like eight and that's still acceptable, right? So find a good number. Um, I don't know. You really don't even have to decide right now. I'm just gonna leave it like that, okay. Um, now this, if I go to my top view, and I look at where this is centered, you'll see that it's centered perfectly right here around all of these pieces. And if I were to go to rotate and rotate this, you'll see it rotates perfectly around that area. So now if I just moved this into here, make sure my snap is on. And I zoomed in there. That should be lined up perfectly. And then Yep, that looks good. And then I'm just going to turn my snap off because I don't need it to move it down. And then I can just move it right on top of that piece. Now, I got to start adding things up. So if I look at this in the top view, and I look at this center line, when I duplicate this onto this side, that other one is going to hang over that red line too. Probably too big. If I look at this side, here's the midline, it's definitely gonna hang over there. So this has to be scaled down quite a bit. So I can just go to that cloner and scale the whole cloner down until it gets past this center line here. So that seems like that's a good fit. Then I can just push this down some. Obviously you wanna have some clearance there. That looks good. All right, and then I need to fill in this gap. This looks weird having a gap here. So then I'm going to take my um, do, do cap. Uh, actually, I'll take the motor peg. And I'll duplicate that. I'm just going to make that bigger. So that gets bigger to cover up all those pieces, and then my peg. Um, I can go in here. I don't need this other motor peg. 
and then my cap can get bigger also. And then these can scoot down just a, that's going to scoot up a hair. And it looks pretty good. It looks like I have plenty of clearance there. All right, so I'm going to just drop this into my symmetry. And so now I have them on all my blades. Okay, I can verify the clearance is good. If I needed to scale this up or wanted to scale it up, I definitely still could, just being aware of where, you know, they're going to intersect, okay? Uh, where it was was actually, you know, probably there is good. Right, and it looks like they're still sticking out a tiny bit. Uh, I'm gonna go to the cloner, I'm gonna go to my radius and just shrink that down some. Just make sure they don't stick through. Like if I go too far, they'll stick through. Like that's good. Cool. So now if I were to smooth that out, smooth this out, if I was to drop my ambient occlusion on both of these and just do a little test render. I'm missing something. <laughs> Um, oops, yep, I didn't put this inside the symmetry, that's why. There we go. Right, so now we have the propellers, we have the cap there, we have the rest of the stuff. Um, as far as the modeling portion of this goes, that's where I'm going to leave it, okay? Um, other stuff I'm going to add to mine is I will add little wires inside of here. I'm going to create a basic shape that would look like a wire, and I'm going to duplicate it all around and move that into that cluster, just like I did the, the propeller area, but I'm going to make it look like a wire, okay, just using a torus or something. Um, I would also add guards to this, so the same way, just trying to create a shape that I could use as a guard um, that would go around those things. Propeller, oops. Uh, oh, there it is, right there. So this one has little guards on it, so if the drone is flying at you and you put your hand up, you'll hit the guard. You wouldn't hit, obviously, the propeller and cut your fingers off. Okay, so I'll build something like that. Again, I'll start off with a basic shape, probably a cylinder. I'll delete faces. This is just a, a huge version of this motor housing. That's all that is. And all I'm doing is going to delete different pieces of it to make it look like I have a line here, a line there, and a line there, and a line going around. That's all I'm going to do and make it look like it's kind of fitted in there. Uh, I'm not going to add legs to this because I added legs using um, the uh, arms of the drone. Uh, but that's definitely something you need to have some way for it to, hit, to land on the ground. Um, students in the past have also created cameras, so if you want to create a camera, you can. You don't have to go through all the the pieces of the lens, like all the pieces of glass that would be there, the aperture opening and closing, you can basically just create a cylinder and some, some two or three basic shapes in here just to create what that lens would look like, and the rest of it would be texture, okay, as far as that goes. The rest of it is just like if you've ever seen a GoPro, the model of it is pretty simple, nothing crazy. Um, if you had a little cockpit area, you had little vents on it, again, we could add those. Um, but just keep in mind that some of the stuff that I do on this, as far as the modeling goes, um, I would actually do at this stage, like after it's all smoothed out and I'm ready to actually take it to the next stage, um, I would hit C on this. I'm not going to hit it now because I still want to do other work to it, but I would hit C on it and then I could grab some of these faces really tiny and start extruding into those areas and create those little loops or those little indents. Um, look at different colors too. So if you have an area that you may want different colors, think about that. If you have little indents, think about those things. What is that? A neat drone. Yeah. Um, I think it also helps too that as you're working on your drone, spin it around and look at it from a cool angle, right? So if I'm down here, this might be an angle that I actually render this out at. I'm looking at the silhouette of it, I'm looking at what it looks like, and I'm seeing if it looks too boring. Right now it's way too boring, there's not enough detail in here, not enough detail on the legs and the arms, so I definitely want to go back before I go and smooth this out fully and start adding some more detail into this. Um, even the propellers, 
I think this cap here could use some work. Maybe uh, taper it in and maybe make it a little bit pointier. So I'll probably do something like that. The wire in the housing here will definitely um, play a role. Mm, maybe I'll add something here too. I don't know, I'll, I'll think of that. A little flag or something might be cool or a little antenna. I think the uh, DJI's, mm, maybe I did not. No, they don't, I lied. Uh, I thought I saw one before that did have like a little antenna or something. That'd be like a receiver, but obviously I'm wrong. Um, so just different things I would add, okay? Um, so 